Hello everyone, Nancy here with A Joyful Cottage. Several months ago, I made a video on a thrift haul I made. And today I wanna to share three items I took from that haul and made over into more of my own style. So we'll take a look at the clip from the original video so you can see the before. And then I'll take you through the makeover process and I'll give you some styling tips. So let's get started. Then I found this. Now this is from a light fixture and it was originally $2.99 for so far $1.50. I found this piece. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone else do what I like to do with these, but I'm going to show it. So the first thing I did was give this light shade two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white. I didn't do anything special before painting it with the chalk paint. It just adhered really well. Then I gave this piece two coats of white linen as well. This was a charger that I found at a thrift store. It was originally uh, this color and also it was um, from Pier 1. I love the lines on this charger and to bring out the beauty of it after it dried, I used a baby wipe to distress it. And now what I'm going to do is to glue these two pieces together. I found the center of the charger and then roughened up the surface with sandpaper. This helps the glue stick. I'm using Gorilla Glue as well as hot glue. The Gorilla Glue is long-term. The hot glue holds it in place until the Gorilla Glue takes hold. I'm holding it for a few seconds, and then I'm going to set it aside and just let it dry for about 24 hours before I start using it. And now I'll show you some ways you can use a piece like this. Here it's used as a riser for a vignette I've styled. Just a few of my favorite things. You may recognize a heart from a video I made on creating no glue hearts. The fall lavender is tied with a strip of flower sackcloth and of course, I've added my beloved French rooster. Another idea is to use this as a cake or a treat stand. Imagine this pretty plate filled with goodies for an afternoon tea. For more inspiration, let's look at another smaller light shade I repurposed. I did the same thing with chalk paint. Just look at the gorgeous detail on this shade. I used this as a base for a coffee filter Christmas tree I made. So pretty. This could also be used as a vase to hold flowers. If you wanted to use real flowers, just insert a small jar with water under the shade. Of course, you can also use this as a base for a riser, as we did with the first shade. I'll show you some options for plates. If you glued these plates onto the base, then I would not recommend immersing this in water. I don't think the chalk paint would hold up to that. The riser I made with the charger is not food safe, so you'd want to use a plate as I showed you, and that would work great because you can remove it and wash it as usual. One final idea is to use this as a bowl. Here it's holding some spring inspiration. It's for $2. Now, it doesn't look like much, right? I mean, it's pretty beat up and I haven't cleaned it or done anything to it, but check this out. Check out this bird on the handle. Is that not the cutest thing ever? I mean, it's a metal tray. I love metal trays. I love birds. I think painted white and distress, this will be a great piece and I can display, use it for display all year round. I'm very excited about this. For spring especially, I think it'd be really, really cute. 
After giving this piece two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white, I started to get really excited. I could begin to see the potential in this piece. I had a French country vision for this tray and thought it was a perfect piece for a transfer. I found two pieces from the IOD Traditional Pots transfer book that I combined to fill the space and add more interest. I kind of eyeballed where to put the transfers and then did a quick measurement to make sure they were centered. Using the tool that comes with the book, I applied the transfers using fairly heavy pressure. I was a little concerned about the rough texture of the tray, but the transfer applied with no problem. I could tell the transfer was releasing from the plastic just fine. I've come to really enjoy using transfers. They're so easy to use and make a big impact on a project. The main thing I've learned is to make sure the transfer has completely released before pulling off the plastic. Pull it back a little if you're not sure, and if it hasn't released, lay the plastic back down and continue, checking until the whole transfer is released. Then use the plastic you've pulled off to burnish the transfer onto your piece. After the first transfer was completely applied and burnished, I did the same thing with the second transfer. Just with the addition of these transfers, you can see the big transformation of this tray taking place. At this point, I applied a coat of clear wax to the entire piece. This seals the transfer as well as the chalk paint. Never wax a piece before applying a transfer. Apply transfer, then wax. There's no question that the little bird makes this tray, and I felt it needed a little something to make it stand out. It just kind of got lost in all the white, so I decided it needed a color all its own, and I chose the color Pool by Waverly Chalk Paint. This is a very pretty blue. When I waxed the tray, I waxed the bird as well. If I didn't like the color, the wax would make it easier to remove the paint. As it turned out, my hunch was correct, and I loved the color. I used a paper towel to pull back a little bit of the color to give it a bit of an aged look. Giving new life to a discarded item is so rewarding. This tray was destined for more. I'm glad I could save it. I really love the way this tray turned out. I hope you like it too. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. really lovely. It's got great bones. It's got good detail on it. It is not painted my style, but I will be repainting it and making it more uh, like my decor, which is primarily neutral, white, that sort of thing. And I will be making this over. So this was um, $9.99 originally, again, half price. So for $5, I got what I think is a Excuse me, a really good price. Zombie. I gave the box two coats of Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the color linen white. Then I did a light dry brushing with Waverly chalk paint in the color steel. I lived with that for a few days and then decided a heavier dry brushing in the steel was needed. 
I wanted the details to really stand out. In my opinion, distressing or dry brushing intricate details on a decorative or furniture piece elevates the design. It's what gives an item that wow factor. Plus, it's just plain fun to do. And the great thing is that if you don't like it, you can always repaint it and do something different. Be creative and have fun. You'll notice the baby wipes in the background. If I ever get too much paint on a piece, Going over it with a baby wipe takes that paint right off and gives me the opportunity to begin again. So I always keep them handy, and the same with paper towels. What a difference a coat or two of paint and some dry brushing can make in a piece like this. From a mass-produced decor piece to a unique piece that fits my style perfectly. I'm so happy with the way this beautiful piece looks now. I'll be using it on my nightstand to hold lotions and keep things tidy. For just a few dollars and a little bit of paint, I created a lovely centerpiece for my dining room table. I used my rooster quite a bit in my centerpieces because I just enjoy it so much. That and the flowers and the heart just give a special touch. The French country tray with a little bird is so pretty. It sits on the stand next to my wicker rocker, and I really like it there. I think it's so springy and pretty and very feminine. I love it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the makeovers and that you got lots of inspiration and ideas for your own home decor. I'll leave links to the supplies that I used in my makeovers in the description box below. Today's scripture is more like a prayer that I'm praying for you, and I hope that God will bless you through it. This is from Ephesians, beginning in chapter 314. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I do pray that for you. I pray that you will know his love, how much he loves you and cares for you, and that it will be a blessing to you in these days. Thank you for joining me. Until we meet again, God bless you.